Welcome to the Maiden Slave Show, yeah. Welcome to the Maiden Slave Show, yeah. It's about that time to do some kind of a countdown, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Countdown. Countdown time. Time to wrap up the Big Four album countdown series review. And things and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can see from... <sighs> Why is Santa Claus on my cup? The real question is, how come he's not on your cup? Anyways, countdown. Top five... Is it five? Let me see. Yeah, it's five. Top five big four albums of 2000... And three, two, two thousand and eleven. But Maiden Slave, Maiden Slave, what about two thousand and two? What about two thousand and twelve? What are you doing, Maiden Slave, Maiden Slave? Yeah, I didn't include two thousand and two and two thousand and twelve because none of these bands released a fucking album in those years. But made it safe! Made it safe! Some of the bands are saying that they're already working on albums for this year and they might come out this year! Made it safe! Made it safe! Yeah, I know that some of the bands have said that they've already begun working on future albums. Some of them have actually said... FUCK! THE ICE CREAM TRUCK RUINS MY FUCKING VIDEO! FUCKING EVERY yeah, I know some of the bands have said that they've already started working on future albums, and uh, some of them have um, actually said that they've done tracks, but, uh, you know, at this point in the game, this year, aka, it's very unlikely that any of them are going to release an album this year. Uh, I think that if any of them were going to release an album this year, they would have had a single out already for the summer, and they would have had some kind of fall release, um, you know, kind of the end of the year type release, which is pretty unusual, so... Um, yeah, I'm not a betting man, but I would bet a pretty good chunk of change that none of them are going to release a big studio album um, until at least 2013. So now that we got that shit out of the way, let's just fucking, let's get into uh, the countdown that I have uh, prepared for all of you people out there. Number five! Christ Illusion is one of the first big uh, thrash albums from these bands to be a part of this big revival uh, of thrash, which has happened in about the last five years or so leading up to the big four concerts. They were all kind of getting back to their roots, which was a lot more popular at this at this point in time because of mainly the internet and, uh, you know, people were over all the bullshit in the 90s. So along with this, obviously Dave Lombardo was back. As I mentioned in my last countdown, uh, Dave Lombardo actually makes a really big difference uh, in Slayer's music. Just, you know, there's a lot more groove, and his drumming overall to me is just a lot more impressive. He just has way better chemistry with the rest of these guys than someone like Paul Bostaff, or anybody for that matter. It's not just Paul, you know, it's just, it's anybody. I think that Dave plays with these three guys better than anybody on the planet. And so obviously, they came out with an album that was a lot more similar to. Um, a lot of their, you know, early stuff. They just kind of tried to bring back the whole team. You know, they had Dave, they got Larry Carroll doing the art again, and the art is fantastic. Most versions you'll see, it's like the parental advisory shit. They couldn't show it in stores, basically. But, you know, it's the internet. And you're on it right now, you can look at it. You already saw it at the beginning of this clip. It's a cool piece of art. Crest Illusion kind of, it combined uh, their old stuff, really, with some of their more modern stuff that a lot of people like. Uh, a lot of people look at this album, you know, like a mix of Rain and Blood and God Hates Us All. It kind of has the same sound as God Hates Us All, so it satisfies them. There's some songs on the album that are actually very similar to a lot of the songs on God Hates Us All. So it was kind of one of those albums that brought everything together, uh, really. Number four! In my opinion, definitely the best Megadeth album to come out since. Countdown to Extinction, and you guys know how much I like that album at this point. Uh, you know, it was just the most consistent. It was the strongest flowing album 
Uh, you know, Megadeth put out a lot of albums in between, obviously, Countdown to Endgame, um, that had gems on each one, but for the most part, they were kind of cluttered with a lot of this, you know, similar sounding, kind of pointless music. Uh, that, that is a big complaint that a lot of people have with Megadeth these days, is that they just put out the same album every couple of years, you know, the same political stuff, the same riffs, the same singing. But I really think that if you are going to check out an album from Megadeth uh, from the last decade, uh, Endgame would definitely be the album to go to. Uh, it, it kind of it, it brought Megadeth back to their past, but it kind of gave it a new, fresh uh, atmosphere as well. It definitely sounds different than the old Megadeth. You're, you're not ever going to get the old Megadeth again. Um, but for the modern age, it is a really good album. It definitely shows progression and evolution, uh, but at the same time, it kind of you know takes them back a, a bit more to their roots, which they're constantly progressing at this point anyways. Uh, and it was probably done uh, the right way out of all these new albums that they've done. It was the first album to feature uh, Chris Broderick. So the solos on it are absolutely fantastic. If you like guitar, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't check out Endgame. So uh, yeah, there you go. Number three! Why do I always fucking mess with three for some reason? I don't know. Whatever, yeah, three. Before you say, hey, Main Slave, you're, you're fucking super biased, and you obviously like Slayer more than everybody, and they're, you know, Slayer is going to have more albums on this list, and, and, and Slayer, and fucking Slayer, and you hate fucking Metallica, and Slayer, and Slayer. Um, it just so happens that the only two albums that Slayer put out in, in this time period were really, really good, and, and World Pain and Blood was definitely better than Crest Illusion. Uh, you know, it just kind of went further down the path of them returning to their roots, but it was a combination of a lot of good elements that Slayer have done before, uh, while at the same time bringing something new to the table. Slayer also gets this criticism of putting out the same album um, every time they do a new album. Uh, I've even heard some people say that they were the thrash metal ACDC, which is pretty funny, but if you actually listen to all of their albums, which I'm pretty sure none of these people actually do, uh, there is a lot of change. And uh, there is actually a lot of change from Christ Illusion to World Painted Blood. The music on it is a lot better. You can definitely tell that not only was Dave Lombardo back, but he was actually inputting a lot of stuff. The best music on this album probably comes from Jeff Henneman. Uh, he has always been probably the best writer in the band. Uh, he had a lot to do with Rain and Blood, Hello Waits, and all that good stuff. Obviously, Kerry King did his own contributions that were really good. Um, there was a few stinkers on this album that I didn't like, but for the most part, the album was really, really good. Uh, I really liked the sound of it. Uh, although the sound isn't quite as good as Christ Illusion, it still held up. They kind of returned to uh, the much more progressive side of them, which obviously came out on Hell Waits. This is definitely an entertaining album, and something that they did on this album that I very much uh, like, um, that I've always liked from Slayer, actually, is the fact that the album itself isn't too long. It just seems like... Nowadays, when big metal bands put out a fucking album, it's like two hours long. And, uh, you know, it just seems like they put a bunch of shit in it. Now, this album has some shit on it, but, it, you know, it's not that bad, and you can just skip it, and, and, and there you go. It, it, consistently, it is a very, very good album. So, yeah, that's number three. Number two! What? Death Magnetic number two, Maiden Slave? But I thought you hated Metallica. No, I don't fucking hate Metallica. You know, I've said this before, and I will say it again. Uh, there are definitely some ooh, really bad albums that Metallica has done. And I don't jump on the bandwagon with a lot of Metallica fans that say that their first four albums were pure gold, that they were just fucking gifts given to us by the gods. You know, I think Metallica is a pretty good band, and every once in a while they throw out a really good album. And, uh, you know, I was actually kind of surprised, too, to see that this album ranked this high on my list. But honestly, I don't know if it's because they didn't put out an album for so long, or a good album for so long, but there's just something about this album that I really like. I actually find myself coming back to it quite a bit. Um, it sounds... It, it sounds definitely like kind of a clone of their first four albums, but there's just some new shades of light on it. And, and the moments on this album that sound new, uh, like the Judas Kiss, 
are the best moments on the entire album. The moments that sound like a complete ripoff of the past, like um, The Day That Never Comes, uh, the fucking instrumental Suicide and Redemption, the, the last fast song, My Apocalypse, that is complete garbage. I agree with the rest of you guys uh, that they kind of, you know, copied what they did in the past. Uh, but I think I mentioned this on my Death Magnetic review. For all those people, um, all those haters or whatever that come out and say, Oh, Metallica, you just do what they did in the past. They just copied. You break the the same fucking people that have been saying for the previous 10 years, right before Death Magnetic came out, uh, that, oh, Metallica needs to get back to their roots and they need to go back to do what they used to do. Well, they did it and you're still not happy, so fuck you. Uh, go die. Death Magnetic is a good album. We all need to admit it that it's it, it's pretty good. Okay, it's it's pretty fucking good. It's not the best album in the world. It's not their best album, but it definitely is one of the best albums to come out of these four bands in the last ten years, easily. Number one. <laughs> What? Maiden Slave? You don't have Slayer or Megadeth at number one? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, okay, look, I'm gonna tell you guys again. I'm not biased, you know, wherever the cards land, they fucking land. Or what is it, the chips? However the chips fall, they, yeah, whatever. Worship Music is easily the best album to come out during this time period. Not only does it sound like they got back to their roots, but it sounds better, okay? A big complaint that I've been having about a lot of these old bands, uh, you know, these days is, first of all, the studio production has gone to shit, and I don't know why. Um, none of the new Metallic albums sound nearly as good as even the Black album did. None of the new Slayer albums sound nearly as good as their old albums. Uh, Megadeth is the only band, aside from Anthrax now, that is actually maintaining really good studio quality. The sound quality on this album is easily better than anything that Anthrax has ever done. And on top of this, they got better somehow. How the fuck did this happen? Like, when before I listened to this album, I heard a lot of people saying, Oh, it's the best thing Anthrax has ever done. Joey Belladonna singing better than he ever has. And you always hear that bullshit whenever a big fucking band puts out a new album. It's the best. It's the, and it's all bullshit. It, it just is. You know it is. They're just being nice. They're just kissing up. But honestly, Joey Belladonna is singing way better than he ever has. His voice on this album is fucking phenomenal. He's probably the best singer to have been singing this long in metal. I'm talking everyone. Rob Halford, Bruce Dickinson, uh, fucking Jeff Tate. All of the big singers aren't singing as good as this guy is singing relative to how he was singing in the 80s. He is singing fucking phenomenal. I don't know how they did it. I, I really don't. It seems like they went back in time and, and got him and fucking brought him to the future and had him sing, but even better somehow. The music on it is probably some of the best music that Anthrax has ever written, period. The album itself is super consistent, super heavy, it has thrash metal, it has power metal elements, you know, this is an element that a lot of the other big four don't have and don't do well. It's the power metal thing, the melodic thing, the good singer thing. It's like they realized, hey, you know what, we actually have really good players, we have a really good singer, we could easily be better than the rest of these guys, and honestly, I really feel like they won this round. Anthrax finally came out and, and whooped everybody. Um, this album is just phenomenal on every end. It has good drumming, it has good bass playing, it has good guitar playing, it has good solos. Um, you know, it's just like the musicianship is fantastic from everybody. The music itself is fantastic. Now, I understand that I did have a few problems with this album. Critically, I think that the intro was unnecessary, the hymns were unnecessary, there was maybe a song or two on there that they could have scrapped, but for the most part, this is easily the best album to come out in between 2003 to 2011. So, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Your guys' lists in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think about my list. I know you guys are going to say, Fuck you, Maze Slave, your Death Magnetic shouldn't be number two, and Math Rack number one. Yeah, okay, whatever. Do what you're going to do in the comments. And I'll, and I'll check out your shit. So, uh, later, guys.